So you're moving to the Emerald Coast and looking at a place like Mary Esther and wondering, can I still afford to move there? <laughs> well, in this video, we will go through all the information that you're going to need to know here in 2023, whether you can afford to live in Mary Esther this year and purchase a home or not. So stick around. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group right here in the beautiful Destin, Fort Walton Beach area, right here on the Emerald Coast. If this is your first time to our channel. We do tons and tons of videos about everything you need to know about our area. Now, as a military veteran of 14 years and now a military spouse, I've moved so many places. Oh, so many places. And every time I move somewhere, there was always such a lack of information of where to move to and what to experience. That's why we created this channel for you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that little bell so you're notified every single time we got a new video coming out. Now, honestly, we get tons of phone calls, emails, and texts from people that are moving here. They got some questions, need some help, and well, we absolutely love it. <laughs> so if you are moving here, got some questions, need some help, you know, give us a call text, email, shoot us that little favor airplane, whatever you got to do, we got your back with moving here to our area. So where is Mary Esther? <laughs> if you're looking at a map in Mary Esther, maybe you know Destin, or maybe you're moving to this area because you're part of the military of Hurlburt Field or uh, Eglin or a seventh group or something like that, and you want to be close <laughs> to those items, you'll find this little town called Mary Esther which is close to Fort Walton Beach and Navarre, right? Um, population of this is only around 6,000 people for residents that are in there. And this area is really known for just being centrally located. If you want quick access to Hurlburt Field, this is the town to live in. It's right down the street. You know, it's a couple minutes to the gate and boom, you're right there if you're working on Hurlburt Field or any of the surrounding supporting areas. Uh, this is a good part. Now, it's not just right there. It also goes kind of up north and in around um, Hurlburt Field as well. So that whole kind of area, there's a shopping like area with a street called Mary Esther Cutoff, uh, where you see a lot of restaurants and things like that. And that's kind of the division between Mary Esther and Fort Walton Beach. Um, now, this does give you quick access to if you want to get to a beach, if you live in Mary Esther as well. Uh, you have Navarre Beach, which was voted as one of the most relaxing beaches in the entire state of Florida. Uh, it also has one of the longest fishing piers ever. Uh, not ever, but <laughs> uh, longest fishing piers here in the state as well. Uh, if that's not enough for you and you don't want the relaxed atmosphere, you can head the other way through Fort Walton and go to Okaloosa Island. And that's where all the condos and there's bars and restaurants and everything else out that way as well. And you're just a short drive across the island to Destin if you want to get into the action there as well. Um, all the amenities surrounding this area, it's not necessarily in Mary Esther, but that surround that area, it's just really good to be centrally located and to be able to have access to those. So can I afford a home in Mary Esther? Well, we'll have to kind of look at the statistics. I love numbers, so we're gonna talk about that, <laughs> okay? We'll talk about a 2021, how it compared to last year, and since this is the beginning of 2023, and some things that have made Mary Esther a little bit more expensive that wouldn't meet the eye, okay? So in uh, 2021, we had a big explosion of real estate. All right, same thing at the beginning of 2022. It, interest rates were super, super low. It was pretty much free money. And the inventory, we just, they couldn't keep up, right? So no matter what you decided to purchase, I mean, the prices were just, that it would, you would try to get in a property and then five other people would try to offer at the same time, right? So we saw this really start to jump. 
So the median home price in that time frame for single family homes was 285,000. But that was a low all the way down to 90,000 and a high up to 2.2 million. Now, clearly that was waterfront property on the intercoastal waterway, but um, absolutely gorgeous home. We actually got to see that one uh, before it sold. In 2022, we can see instead of 429 units, only 331 units sold. Okay. The median price went up from 285 to 325, that's 325,000 as a median home price. So big jump, right? It was a low of 85,000, and I think that one was a modular home, but a high up to 1.9 million. That was the waterfront that sold uh, in 2022. So what changed? What happened in our market? Well, uh, for those of us working uh, with buyers and sellers last year, uh, from January all the way down till about June, maybe July, it was still the market was on fire. It was a fire sale. <laughs> things were just going left and things were going right. It was just, it was so hard. And you, the buyers just didn't have any leverage because there was just too many of them, right? They qualified. And then once the Fed started hiring interest rates, or hiring their rates, of course, the real estate market, of course, their rates followed, they always seem to. And then the buying power started to diminish. Then people started getting worried about the market, so they stopped really, start, really stopped buying because the interest rates were going up, which means buying power went down. So the pool of buyers started to shrink. The inventory then began to rise, which is actually pretty advantageous for you as a buyer right? So the home prices, instead of just shooting up in appreciation, started to slow. So if you start to see some of these numbers, you can have fun with all sorts of numbers, right? And the news media and the blogs or whatever else that you are looking at can lie to you and still maybe not lie to you, but give you misinformation. What I'm here to tell you is that they're going to say that there's been a depreciation, but there may be a depreciation in appreciation. What does that mean? So imagine that we had our uh, real estate market and it hit 2020, 2021, and it just started to skyrocket as prices like went fast up, right? And as soon as we started to see a slowdown, it didn't go down. It's just the rate of which it was going up has slowed, right? And normally what we see is appreciation somewhere around three, maybe 4% year over year. And now, or in, and at that time, it was in some places up to 12% year over year. Yeah, well, we're going to see a decrease. <laughs> that makes sense, right? So home values are still going up. They're just not going up at the same rate. So you can't overprice a property. And if you do and you don't get it where consumers are trying to uh, purchase or be willing to purchase, you sit on the market for a long time until it finally, you know, hits that mark. So pricing is really important. Not that you have to worry about that as a buyer, because now you actually have some pull because <laughs> there's not as many of you out there that don't have the same amount of buying power. So that's really good. So the prices in Mariester are going to look favorable than we'll say maybe Fort Walton Beach or Navarre or something like that. Okay. Now that's the part that has changed. What else has changed? Well, we talked about interest rates. That has changed. <laughs> uh, we'll just use VA since that's been a big um, player in our market because of all the military bases that surround us. Uh, so VA, a couple of years ago, we saw lowest rates as like 2.3 to 3%, 4%. You know, those were the lower rates that we saw over the past, you know, three to five years, right? And now we're looking at VA somewhere around six, six and a half. We even saw it pushing seven at some point. So it's nearly doubled since that time. Um, so that being said, your buying power, how much you can get at that interest rate, no, not as great. This is also one of those things too, where you're going to look at that interest rate and now investors, it's not going to be as good of a deal as if it was, you know, at a lower interest rate so that they could collect rent, you know, be a landlord, that sort of investment for long-term um, sort of, yeah, or long-term or short-term investments in real estate. Now, the big thing, the one the thing that you've been waiting nine minutes for that you should be paying attention to is the insurance. I don't know why. 
but insurance companies just don't, they just don't like Mary Esther and they don't like homes that weren't brand brand new. And they definitely don't like any that are sitting in a flood zone. So uh, insurance rates are the big change that you don't see. So make sure when you're looking at these and you're looking at a home that you ask your real estate professional, hey, what's the insurance going to be like on this? Because if it's an older home and it has a bunch of issues, these are something that you're going to have to know up front. So when you're through the negotiations for repairs, that, hey, this roof isn't going to pass, right? The insurance is not going to insure that roof. Or they're not going to insure a home that has a hot water heater that's over 15 years old. Or that HVAC unit, or all these other things that they may throw at you. For some reason, one or the other, they just don't want to insure houses in Mary Esther. Now that could change. Uh, I think we've started to see them relax just a little bit and we are seeing a lot of homeowners uh, reaching out to the governor to try to put some sort of regulations for these just skyrocketing insurance costs. Now, as of right now, it's not terribly, terribly bad, but it is, it is very difficult to get those things in Mary Esther at this time in our market. So again, ask those questions. If you want to move to Mary Esther, it might even still be worth it with the favorable prices, even with the interest rates being what they are. Um, but again, have somebody go through it, talk to a local lender, uh, talk to a real estate professional, and we'll be able to get you going and make sure that you can afford living in Mary Esther, Florida. But that's all I have for you for, for now. Uh, if you do have any questions about this, please leave it in the comments below. And if you are moving to Mary Esther or anywhere around here on the Emerald Coast and you've got some questions, need some help, contact me, contact my team here. We'd love to help. Uh, give us a call, text, email, find us on social media, whatever you got to do. Uh, we got your back when moving here to our area. But again, I'm Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here with LPT Realty. We'll see you in our next video. Take care.